Greetings and welcome to the land of reggae music, the land of wood and water, the country that gave the world one of the greatest health professionals ever, the great, honorable, outstanding Mary Seacole. Yep. And this year is a significant year. It's the International Year of the nurse and the midwife. And so on behalf of the entire Jamaican family and the Jamaican diaspora, we want to salute and celebrate not just our nurses, but all those on the front line fighting COVID-19. Whatever time of day it is where you are, greetings and welcome. I'm your moderator, Dervan Malcolm. We'll introduce the members of our panel as we go along, but we just want you to know that whatever you're going through right now, we are with you. We want to help you to feel good again, and uh, we look forward to your staying with us, for your joining us on uh, visitjamaica.com. We're streaming live on Facebook, on YouTube, and uh, keep watching, keep going to the Visit Jamaica page or staying there. Don't leave because there will be prizes throughout at different points. We look forward, we look forward to that. So what's happening here? This is, the, this is Tourism Awareness Week. And uh, as part of Tourism Awareness Week, uh, the Jamaica Tourist Board and uh, the other agencies of the Ministry of uh, Tourism have been doing this for quite a number of years. And this year, it's obviously different. We know that the entire world is being impacted by COVID-19 and, and our industry here in Jamaica has been hit extremely hard. And this negative effect has serious implications. So we want to reason, we want to talk, we want to share, we want to hear from you as well throughout the program. Tourism is a very significant 
industry for Jamaica. 50% of Jamaica's foreign exchange depends on tourism. Tourism creates jobs, supports local businesses, strengthens linkages across sectors, and keeps the dollar stable and the cost of living down. It is indeed our bread and butter. And we thank all those of you through thick and thin who continue to support this land of ours, Jamaica. And we look forward to that support continuing. We want to also let you know that this week, Tourism Awareness Week, we've been hosting a series of activities, not in the usual way, but we managed to host a virtual church service to start off the week. Then we had a virtual expo yesterday. And uh, here we are uh, for this virtual uh, webinar, the virtual expo on Wednesday. We have a virtual webinar right now, and we're happy that you have been able to join us. Uh, you would have seen those of you both locally and overseas, uh, the, the advertorials the, in the national papers, uh, the youth photography contest, and we're particularly uh, pleased about this, notwithstanding all that's been happening, we've been able to get our young people engaged through the World Tourism Day 2020 photo competition. One of the activities hosted by, uh, during this week, Tourism Awareness Week, and the aim is really uh, to get our young people, more of our young people engaged and, and participating in uh, a level of uh, awareness that will augur well for the sustainability of this industry. The World Tours Tourism Day theme, Tourism and uh, Rural Development. Uh, here uh, in Jamaica, we say uh, tourism, uh, the heartbeat of Jamaica's economy. Tourism and rural development, yes, the focus, but tourism, the heartbeat of Jamaica and the Jamaican economy. Jamaica is the heartbeat of the world, and we thank you for that vote of confidence. And we just want you to come and join us and feel good again. We mentioned the competition, the World Tourism Day 2020 photo competition, and we want to share a couple of the, we want to share the pictures with you. The winners of uh, the top nine entries for the World Tourism Day 2020 photo competition, there were two divisions, the junior division, and in the junior division, uh, the winner is uh, Delisha James. And uh, as you can see, this is uh, Delisha's photo. Uh, the, the idea is tourism isn't always about hotels and busy urban areas. Sometimes it's about finding serenity in rural areas. And if you're trying to figure out where in Jamaica uh, this picture was taken, Orange Bay in Hanover. Orange Bay in Hanover. Or, and the total number of likes on Facebook and Instagram 222. So congratulations to Delice, Delisha James on winning the junior category. Now in the, in the senior category, the senior division, and you will see that photo in, there we go, look at this. Uh, the winner, Swadian Welsh, Swadian Welsh. And if you're trying to figure out where in Jamaica this is, it's Trinity River, Trinity River in Linstead, St. Catherine. And it received quite a few likes on Instagram and Facebook, 545. Congratulations to our winners. Now we have a special uh, video presentation for you.
Hello, welcome to the National Gallery of Jamaica. My name is O'Neill Lawrence and I will be your guide today. Our current exhibition, Jamaica Jamaica, looks at some of the key figures and developments in Jamaica's musical culture. People are aware of Jamaica's musical culture and not aware of our rich artistic heritage and this exhibition is one that brings together both of those aspects of our artistic development. Wasn't that just exhilarating and at the same time therapeutic? Yes, these are tough times and that's the idea. We want to help you to cope. We want to help you to feel good again. How are you feeling now? You can share your thoughts with us online. Go to uh, Facebook. We're live on Facebook, we're live on, uh, on, on the visitjamaica.com website. And we look forward to having your, your feedback. And remember, we have some special prizes in store for you. So keep watching, keep listening, keep looking out for those questions that are going to be popping up. As you've well been aware of because this tourism awareness webinar has been very well promoted. Tourism and rural development being the theme. Tourism, the heartbeat of Jamaica's economy. Jamaica, of course, the heartbeat of the world. And so we're going to talk, we're going to share, we're going to listen, we're going to answer your questions as well. And to help us in that regard, we have uh, a team of uh, professionals who are able to help us. And we'll properly introduce them just before their presentations. But to go through the list right here and now, of course, the Honorable Ed Bartlett, fresh from being inducted into the International Tourism Heroes Hall of Fame. Uh, we look forward to his presentation. The Director of Tourism, Donovan White, the uh, JTB's uh, Deputy Director for the Americas, Donnie Dawson, uh, the President, the newly minted President of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, Mr. Clifton Reader, Jason Hensel, Chairman of Jake's Hotel, Villas and a Spa, and very involved with the Bread's Treasure Beach Foundation. And Angela Bennett, she is Regional Director, Canada, Jamaica Tourist Board. With almost 30 years of travel industry experience, Angela Bennett brings a wealth of knowledge and passion to her role as Regional Director of Tourism for Canada at the Jamaica Tourist Board. Leading the Tourism Board's national sales team, uh, she works closely with industry partners and travel agents across the country to build relationships, provide educational resources on the destination, and drive year-round travel to Jamaica. Originally from Montego Bay, she has worked in hospitality sales and marketing positions across the globe in several international markets, including the U.S., Europe, Latin America, and, of course, Jamaica. 
Please welcome Regional Director, Canada, Jamaica Tourist Board, Angela Bennett. we're going to share with you Grand Jamaica, the lore of Grand Jamaica globally. Good hand the slide. Right. I think Angela is just about ready for us. And uh, so this is her, her topic, Tourism Awareness Week. The allure, her topic is the allure of destination Jamaica globally. Angela, are you hearing us? Yes, I am hearing you and I am ready to go. Well, by all means, <laughs> go ahead and tell us about that allure, that, that pull factor that keeps people coming again and again and again. could have the side. Jamaica's larger than life people, vibrant culture and bucket list experiences have a powerful impact on the world and all who visit it. Our brand is not just advertising a logo or a tagline. Destination Jamaica's brand is a promise that we make and deliver to our visitors and to each other every day. It is our essence. Jamaica Tourist Board brand, our history, founded in 1955, the Jamaica Tourist Board oversees strategic planning, marketing, and promotion of tourism in Jamaica. Until 1993, the JTB's responsibility included not only marketing Jamaica as a tourist destination, but also developing the country's tourism product. Since 1993, the two functions have been separated with product development now handled by a separate agency, the Tourism Product Development Company. Today, the JTB operates as a statutory organization under the Ministry of Tourism. We are responsible for promoting the unique appeal of the island through creative programming and marketing worldwide to ensure that Jamaica remains the premier tourist destination in the Caribbean. Our campaign history, Come to Jamaica, was created in 1955 until 1963. Come back to Jamaica reigned until 1975. Discover Jamaica, was created in 1975 until 1984. Make It Jamaica Again lasted until 1994, and our iconic One Love was created in 1994 and reigned until 2003. Once You Go You Know lasted until 2011, and Home of All Ride stayed with us until 2018. Heartbeat of the world is a reigning tagline for us that was created in 2019 to present. Our brand evolution showcases our country, our people, our history, and of course, our culture. Our global reach. It is the mission of the Jamaica Tourist Board to promote Jamaica as the preferred travel destination identify new and emerging consumer groups, cultivate new relationships, and disseminate timely and useful marketing information to our travel partners worldwide. In keeping with our mandate, Thank the you. JTB maintains an international network of representatives and offices in key markets across the globe. I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulty here. Are you still seeing the screen? 
Yes, um, in keeping with our mandate, the JTB maintains an international network of representatives and offices in key markets across the globe. We have corporate offices in Kingston and sales offices in Montego Bay, Miami, Toronto, London. The tourist board also has global representatives based in Germany, Spain, France, Italy, the Netherlands, India, and Japan. International recognition. Over its 65 years history, the JTB has, celebra has been celebrated for its exceptional leadership, innovation, and service within the tourism sector. The organization has been honored with prestigious awards from industry and trade partners, both regionally and internationally. The World Travel Awards has named the Jamaica Tourist Board as the Caribbean's leading tourist board for 13 consecutive years from 2006 to 2019. Destination Jamaica's brand value and strength. Jamaica is home to some of the world's best accommodations, attractions, and service providers. As the country's national tourism agency, the JTB has, is tasked with keeping the destination at the forefront of an increasingly competitive global marketplace. We create awareness and increase demand for the destination while differentiating Jamaica from its competitors by implementing strategic advertising, public relations, sales and promotional programs or brand value. On the map, Jamaica is a dot in the Caribbean Sea, but our influence in the world is oversized. Destination Jamaica attracts approximately 4.3 million visitors in 2019 and boasts 85% brand awareness globally. Or global influence. The endearing strength of Destination Jamaica's brand can be seen around the world. Jamaica's unique cultural identity and spirit resonates with citizens internationally and can be seen in the world of sports, food, tourism, culture, music, and education. Jamaica, the heartbeat of the world, or 2020 brand, campaign. This fresh brand positioning acknowledges Destination Jamaica's important influence on the world and strengthens the island's role as a global tourism brand. Geographically, the heartbeat of the world campaign not only puts Destination Jamaica at the center of the world, but also elevates the tourism brand to new heights by reinforcing our position as a global leader among travel destinations and establishing our island as the single destination every traveler must experience. The campaign message extends beyond tourism and encompasses all elements of Jamaica's rich and vibrant culture by showcasing diverse appeal of the destination through seven key brand pillars. The pillars, the brand, ride the rhythm, romance, skip a beat, nature, change the pace, adventure, feel the rush, music, move the, to the music, cuisine, join the feast, and wellness, find your zen. As we look forward, the COVID-19 pandemic has signif significantly reduced tourism from our major source markets. Cultivating and promoting the destination Jamaica brand as a global scale is more important now than before. So whether your favorite tagline is come to Jamaica, once you know you go, home of all right, or iconic one love, Jamaica remains the heartbeat of the world. Come join us and feel good again. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angela Bennett, Regional Director for Canada for the Jamaica Tourist Board. That's the idea. Are you feeling it wherever in the world you are watching and listening? Yeah. We want you to come and join us and feel good again. Thank you very much for staying with us. We're going to hear now from the newly installed president of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association. Uh, he was recently elected unopposed, or is it, yeah, recently elected at the 59th Annual General Meeting of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, JHTA. Uh, he's a past counselor of the Ocho Rios chapter of the JHTA. He was recognized as Hotelier of the Year in 2011. In fact, his career as a hotelier uh, spans more than three decades at various local and international hotels. In 2003, he was recognized by the University of the West Indies for outstanding academic achievement, as well as providing sound leadership in the hospitality industry. Let's hear from Mr. Clifton Reader. Good morning, everyone. It is certainly a pleasure to be here this morning, and it's not all doom and gloom, because in our industry, we are making it work through the development of sound protocols, which I will get into in a little bit. Happy Tourism Week to all my colleagues within the tourism industry, our employees, families, the communities we serve. On behalf of the council, the members of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, JHTA, our commendations to the Jamaica Tourist Board and its partners in organizing a comprehensive series of activities in celebrating our Tourism Awareness Week 2020, including this webinar. The theme, Tourism, Rural Development, as defined by UNWTO, and your own sub-theme, tourism, the heartbeat of Jamaica's economy, are perhaps coincidental. It is against this background, ladies and gentlemen, that I would like to link the importance of COVID protocols in protecting communities, workers, and visitors and the need for innovations in product diversification in rebuilding our industry. There is no doubt that tourism plays an important role in diversifying our rural economy and contributing to sustainable rural development. There is clearly a significant relationship generally between tourism development and sociocultural, environmental, and economic development. Rural tourism also promotes social transformation, including job creation, growth, infrastructural development, and helps to curb urban migration. For many of our JHTA members, a large percentage of our team members live in rural communities. I mention our protocols, ladies and gentlemen, because they have saved us. Since June 15, we open our doors in the hotel sector. And I can tell you, to date, not even one transmission, as far as we know, has been detected between guest, staff, and vice versa. 
This is a big thing to talk about because if we are able to get this program into communities, then I believe we will be able to manage the spread and protect lives. In this regard, the JHTA has developed its COVID ambassador program in which we are sharing our well-defined protocols and the knowledge of our well-trained employees with the communities around us. In this program, each participating JHTA member hotel will undertake to educate two or three small communities in their immediate surroundings and where many of our staff live. We will focus, ladies and gentlemen, on the established protocols that make the best and biggest difference. Mask wearing, social distancing, hand washing or sanitizing. Our staff will be the champions, the ambassadors of this cause, guided by our general managers, we're starting from Boscobel in the east to Bahia in the west, and every single hotel, general managers, the team members as ambassadors will be participating, along with the area chairs for JHTA. We will be soliciting the help of local radio stations, such as IRI FM, to spread the word. We are working in collaboration with TPDCO, Ministry of Health, the police, local parish councils to get the message out. At 4 p.m. today, we will be launching the pilot program in Ocho Rios, after which we will move it to Montego Bay, Negril, then around the island. This program will keep our staff safe, and by extension, our guests will be safe. While many recovery plans are focused on the protocols, we also have to increase our business survival rate. We have been talking for years about community tourism. But the truth is, we have been so busy growing the industry, we have not had time to reset. Now could be that time. In terms of community tourism, we are looking at, we are looking at many different ways. Whilst COVID has been raging, the Jamaicans who normally go abroad have discovered very good gems and we have seen our domestic tourism sector increased from St. Elizabeth to Negril especially, Port Antonio, Ocho Rios. Visiting friends and relatives, we have many of our relatives and friends coming from abroad and they too are discovering the inner areas of Jamaica. Faith-based travelers, also those wanderlust visitors who like to explore the local rivers, floras, and faunas. Of course, there are the millennials who feel that their lives has been put on hold for months and they are ready for adventure for adventure. Beautiful Jamaica is waiting. COVID has been and continues to be very challenging, but we also have an opportunity to rebuild tourism from the bottom up. In the rural communities, we already have many instances of success from Stush in the Bush to the Rasta village in Montego Bay 
Murphy's Hill being developed by Misty's Restaurant, where guests can experience our local cuisine and sometimes participate in its preparation. Linking farmers from rural communities with our chefs in large hotels will be the development or the strengthening of that farm to table projects. Most farmers are not aware the transformation that their product actually go through from their farm to the plates of our guests and staff. We are looking at making it more difficult because the linkages, transportation from rural communities tend to be a problem. We are calling on private and public partners to develop commercial chill rooms in tourism plants so that we can get all our produce from one source, the farmers would feed into that source, and the hotels would basically just pick up on a daily basis. This would also go into production where certain fruits or vegetables not suitable for the hotel trade could go into making juices, which we will definitely uh, purchase. Communication is key. We have to continuously demonstrate that visiting our island is simple, safe, and straightforward. The biggest issue we have right now is pre-approval. Seeing a 20% cancellation rate as we go forward. But I know representation have been made and we are correcting the problem. So looking to the winter, as I said before, quite a few places are looking at, that are open, are looking at 35% occupancy. Some are even looking at 75% occupancy. But should we not fix this problem, this blockage in the system, we may see a 20% decline from those forecasted occupancies. We keep saying that the COVID pandemic is unprecedented. It is. It is also unwelcome, but it is our current reality. The tourism industry may feel the negative impact of this for a long time, but we must employ creative and innovative solutions to manage the virus. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, this is the most united I have ever seen the tourism sector. Along with private sector, along with government, we must all work together to reach the goal or of reviving tourism in Jamaica. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Reader. If you're just tuning in, this is uh, Jamaica's Tourism Awareness Week webinar. Tourism and rural development. Tourism, the heartbeat of Jamaica's economy. And Jamaica remains uh, the heartbeat of the world. We want to continue to share with you. We want to reason with you. We want to help you to understand what's happening we want to, to set you at ease and set your mind at ease uh, through all that we're doing here in Jamaica uh, to be as safe as possible. In fact, we've been seeing quite a few tweets from those who have had the pleasure of vacationing in Jamaica during uh, this, this pandemic and uh, the accolades continue to flow. We thank you very much for making it Jamaica and those of you who are not here yet, we look forward to, to seeing you as we welcome you safely and keep you safe while here in Jamaica. 
And so in this webinar, we've been looking at a couple of issues. You've heard from Angela Bennett, Regional Director uh, for the Jamaica Tourist Board in Canada, looking at the allure of brand and destination Jamaica globally. You've heard from uh, Clifton Reader, the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association president. Uh, he's also managing director of Moon Palace Jamaica, and he shared with us the importance of the COVID protocols in protecting communities, workers, and visitors. It's now time to hear from the Director of Tourism, who was appointed in February 2018, bringing to the Jamaica Tourist Board more than 20 years experience as a senior executive in marketing and business development. A strategist and business leader, he's responsible for promoting and further enhancing Jamaica's reputation as the premier destination in the global marketplace pursuing an aggressive and robust marketing agenda with a key focus, a keen focus on technology, all with a view to exceeding major growth goals. Since taking the helm, he has strategized to ensure the destination continues on its growth trajectory. For two consecutive years, in 2018 and 2019, Jamaica exceeded the 4 million mark for total visitor arrivals. He has placed greater emphasis on technology, guiding the implementation of a number of award-winning digital activations, including Join Me in Jamaica and the hugely popular Escape to Jamaica. He's an avid sportsman. He actually won quite a number of medals in the championships. So uh, he is perhaps, what would we say, the champion athlete as far as uh, tourism marketing is concerned. Please welcome the Director of Tourism, Mr. Donovan White. Thank you, Derval. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. Uh, first of all, let me uh, say greetings and good morning. It still is morning. Uh, to all who have tuned in and all who are here with us um, in this webinar. Uh, I must say a special good morning to our Honorable Minister, Edmund Bartlett. He is our visionary, our ambassador, our global um, icon, if you will, uh, that keeps uh, us on our toes and keep this industry um, you know, going places and doing new things and charting new course. Um, and so for that, I wanted to say a special good morning to him. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure uh, we are all waiting with bated breath to hear him when he speaks to us later on this morning in this webinar. I also want to uh, say good morning and welcome to the president of the JHTA, Clifton Rida. Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, your presentation was extremely well received. And, um, you know, we are heartened by the continued hardening and deepening of the relationship uh, between the private and the public sector within our tourism industry. Um, and also welcome to all other members of the tourism family who are here with us uh, this morning. Uh, this morning I've been asked to, to speak to you on the topic uh, where, creative, where creativity meets purpose, uh, the tourism digital transformation um, and what a transformation it has been. Jamaica as a brand is internationally perceived as a larger than life destination. Our culture, our music, our food, our attractions, our people are the pulses of the heartbeat of the world. It is these passion points that visitors desire most when they come to our shores. But these elements look different as we live and travel with COVID. And it is crucial that we find creative ways to preserve these experiences while we navigate our new reality. Crisis and challenges always serve as turning points in our history. They're defining moments. We can choose to turn away or seek solace in the old ways. But as a nation, I am proud to say we chose the path to lean into a new and brighter future. Over the past six months, we have challenged ourselves to think differently and it has strengthened 
our position at the forefront of the tourism recovery. One clear example of our efforts is the establishment of the Tourism Resilient Corridor. This game-changing approach to reopening as an industry first uh, and the, was the vision of the Honorable Minister Edmund Bartlett. It has allowed us to prioritize safety while mitigating the spread of COVID-19 and continuing to provide authentic, enjoyable, seamless Jamaican getaway experiences. A significant piece of our success implementing the Resilient Corridors has been the focus and determination of our partners. And like President Rita said, the tourism industry has never been more unified. This Tourism Resilient Corridor has now become an industry standard and many destinations around the world are adopting similar models to reopen destinations. We have seen similar established uh, uh, protocols or corridors from Thailand to Hawaii. And so the move is on and Jamaica has led the way again in providing guidance and vision as to how best to do this. While our borders were closed, we also reimagined and transformed in-person experiences into digital activations in order to generate consumer participation, anticipation as well, desire, excitement, and ultimately the necessary confidence to drive travelers to visit Jamaica again. While Jamaica has remained at the leading edge of online marketing to maintain consumer connections, by expanding our digital initiatives, we provided consumers with exclusive access to the destination like never before. Across the industry, we are seeing that virtual activations succeed when they're highly curated and offer a distinctive experience that bridges physical distance. For example, in Europe, the Bristol from, uh, from home campaign, we aim at keeping sofa tourists busy with a collection of online visits and tours, including a Banksy Street art trail. Meanwhile, in South Africa, in the We Are Worth Waiting For campaign, they painted parallels to long distance relationships with a reminder that absence makes the heart grow fonder. Jamaica's own virtual activations, such as Escape to Jamaica, the world's largest virtual wedding, and a number of virtual tours, some of which you saw at the beginning of this webinar, highlighted our brand pillars of culinary, adventure, romance, music, and above all, our people. It was clear from the engagement and feedback we received from this digital programming that demand for destination remained strong. So much so, the reach of our digital campaigns have already amassed over 450 million impressions. But that was just the beginning. As we look toward the future, we have to keep pushing to innovate and ensure that our audience remain engaged with our destination. I truly believe that Jamaicans are the most resilient people in the world. We will always rise up against any challenge. We have done it in the past and we will do it again. You may recognize this Nike video you're about to see. I want you to pay attention, pay keen attention to the creativity, the attention to detail, and of course, the message. The spot sends a clear message of perseverance and resilience. Coronavirus can't stop sports and it can't stop us. Can you play the video, please? We're never alone. And that is our strength. Because when we're doubted, we'll play as one. When we're held back, We'll go farther and harder. If we're not taken seriously, we'll prove that wrong. And if we don't fit the sport, we'll change the sport. We 
We know things won't always go our way. And the world's sporting events are postponed or cancelled. But whatever it is, we'll find a way. And when things aren't fair, we'll come together for change. We have a responsibility to make this world a better place. And no matter how bad it gets, we will always come back stronger. Because nothing can stop what we can do together. Again, I say, you can't stop us either. We have our eyes firmly set to the future and we are continually navigating and creating new ways to meet the demands of the consumer, including those who are ready to travel and are taking to the skies and those still wander lusting from the living rooms behind the screens. But the JTB can't do it alone. The success of the private and public sector working together was evident in the implementation of the countrywide health and safety protocols. Looking ahead, we must continue to continue the collaboration as we seek new and inventive ways to connect, not only to our potential visitors, but also to each other. It is through this partnership that we can achieve greater success to affect a tourism-led economy. Demand for rural tourism is on the rise all over the world, and Jamaica is at the forefront of this trend. Jamaica has already started implementing rural tourism programs through the Ministry of Tourism's newly launched Community Tourism Unit, aimed to help strengthen the relationship of tourism to other sectors of the island's economy. Rural tourism development will further enrich the Jamaican experience for our travelers while benefiting our local communities economically and socially. The success of rural tourism in Jamaica will be further driven by projected consumer demands. As people experience continued screen fatigue from efforts to remain connected for their work or personal lives, they will want to fully disconnect, specifically seeking out remote leisure and educational experiences beyond the beaten path, such as local markets, cultural exchanges, personalized and private farm to table experiences, and increasingly nature focused getaways without technology. In continuing to stay ahead of the consumer expectation, Jamaica's approach to product development is also transforming as we move into a new age. Our latest wellness initiative, Discover Jamaica by Bike, is a glimpse into what the future could hold for our visitors, laying the groundwork for new initiatives rooted in active and outdoor experiences to enable physical distancing. I can attest to the, tr to the thrill of this experience personally, as I'm currently testing out the first iteration of the route with my colleagues and members of the Jamaica Cycle, Cycle Association. This local event will serve as a pilot for a consumer cycling experience to debut in spring of 2021, fulfilling anticipated traveler interests in programs that combine the natural beauty of the landscape with an even greater focus on overall wellness and physical activity. COVID has undoubtedly accelerated the development of new technologies. Globally, these advances are recontouring our industry, and we expect they will continue, they will remain a crucial component for recovery and rebuilding. Next month in November, we will gather for JPEX, which will be for the first time ever a virtual event. We have seen a number of other industries, industry events go virtual over the past six months. From ILTM to Cruise World to WTM, 
In that short time span, the technology has evolved considerably, creating opportunities for real time and scheduled interaction truly reflective in an in-person event. These highly advanced virtual platforms are changing the way we meet and do business, and also the way we experience places and large scale events like concerts and festivals. Enhanced digital integrations lay the groundwork for a hybrid future, extending the reach of in-person programming and connecting those on the ground with those tuning in from afar. Virtual platforms and new technologies that were the buzzwords just a few months ago are now the new normal and for the foreseeable future and are all part of our consideration set as we explore how to make our travel experiences even more seamless for travelers around the world. As with virtual events, artificial intelligence in tourism is taking a massive leap forward and transforming the industry as we speak. We are seeing COVID-19 things like pass cards, similar to virtual passports, being developed in Israel to deliver updated testing requirements and traveler-based um, information on departure and arrival in cities as a solution to quickly change to changing policies. They will also hold critical information, information such as personal medical profiles and immunization uh, records in cases of emergency. A prototype of temperature reading glasses is in the works by researchers in Beijing as we speak and San Francisco. In Tokyo, multilingual chatbots or virtual tour guides, as they call them, are helping to pair travelers with local operators at the destination. Closer to home, our robust programming and integrated marketing will continue to showcase the heartbeat of the world and enhance would-be visitors with a taste of what is waiting for them. Inspire travel and achieve the tourism growth we know we are capable of leading the Caribbean as a destination. It is without a doubt that the landscape of our tourism industry has changed. What remains unchanged is Jamaica unwavering commitment to exemplary leadership in tourism and our ability to remain nimble and innovative as we live and travel in a COVID world. As a nation of strength, optimism and resilience, Jamaica knows better than anyone else that with crisis comes a golden opportunity for innovation and a recovery that makes us stronger than ever. Thank you again for being here today. And I look forward to continuing to working with all of you towards a better and stronger Jamaica. Thank you. Thank you very much, Donovan White, Director of Tourism for giving us your perspective in this webinar, all a part of Tourism Awareness Week activities here in Jamaica. Wherever you are in the world watching, listening, thank you so much. Remember, don't take your eyes off the visitjamaica.com website because, and, and, and Facebook, don't forget Facebook either. Look out for some fun questions which will give you opportunities to win prizes. You don't want to miss that. That's a part of the fun. Uh, we can't spell Jamaica without fun. You get the picture. Right, that's the idea. This uh, tourism and rural development themed webinar uh, reminds us of the importance of tourism to the Jamaican economy. And you have been hearing from the presentation so far how we have been responding to ensure that we are uh, improving on the existing product, we're always improving, and also that we are putting in place the necessary protocols to keep our people safe here in Jamaica, to keep the team members in the industry safe, and to keep you, our visitors, from all over the world safe. 
and we thank you for your support and we look forward to continuing to play our part in helping you to feel good again. Speaking of feeling good again, I believe we have another of those feel good videos. Let's take a look. We can't thank enough the team for putting together these snapshots, these vignettes, these pictures, live and still photographs on uh, what's been happening here in Jamaica as far as tourism is concerned. And you would have noticed uh, footage of the rural parts of well, as well in terms of the theme, tourism and rural development. Speaking of rural, <laughs> our next presenter uh, knows, and he proudly, he proudly uh, will tell you, he's, he's happy to be uh, one of the key stakeholders as far as uh, tourism is concerned in what some people would call rural or go as far as to say deep rural, no. Jason Hensel is Managing Director of the family-owned, award-winning boutique hotel, Jake's, which celebrated its 27th anniversary in March this year. Jake's is based in the community of Treasure Beach on Jamaica's south coast. Jason Hensel himself is a social entrepreneur and an advocate for sustainable community development. He's also the, co the founder and chairman of BREADS, the Treasure Beach Foundation, which promotes education, conservation, and sport for social change. His emphasis on grassroots development is anchored by his ties to the Treasure Beach community. Uh, this, for more information, it's a fishing village where his grandparents built a cottage in 1941 and where in 1993, his mother, Sally, started a small restaurant to cater for backpacking visitors. The rest is history. In fact, Cosmopolitan Magazine uh, regards Jake's Hotel as the most, and this is a new word, the most Instagrammable hotel. Yeah. The Jake's Off-Road Triathlon is now the longest continual in the world, with 2019 being the 25th staging. And then, of course, there's the Calabash International Literary Festival. 
Uh, the Breads the Treasure Beach Foundation, this nonprofit, Jason has been instrumental in raising more than a million US dollars from both uh, public and private sector to create the Treasure Beach Sports Park and Academy. Uh, there's just so much more, and uh, just to top it off by saying on the 6th of August last year, Jamaica's uh, 57th uh, independence, His Excellency, the Governor General, conferred the honor of the Order of Distinction in the rank of officer upon Jason in recognition for his contribution to tourism and community development. Well, keep the applause going as we welcome Jason Henson, OD. Thank you very much, Derman. What an introduction, my goodness. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to be asked by the Ministry of Tourism to present the, on the tourism and rural development, the theme of this year's Tourism Awareness Week. I want to commend the Ministry for highlighting this partnership. In Jamaica, tourism and rural development are intrinsically linked. As all of our tourist destinations were once considered rural, and with the help of access through ports, roads, airports, developed with tourism being central to their economies. Some examples of this include Port Antonio, once an important port for exporting bananas to England, was also home to one of Jamaica's earliest hotels, the Titchfield Hotel, which boasted over 400 rooms and was built for the Great Exhibition of 1891. Port Antonio as a destination spans rural areas of Portland and offers nature-based attractions such as Reach Falls, rafting down the Rio Grande, swimming in the Blue Lagoon, and eating jerk at its birthplace on Boston Bay. Aracabeso, a quiet port which was also built around the export of bananas. It was dredged by the government for tourism development when the port became too shallow for the larger ships carrying bananas. This town capitalized on the legacy of Ian Fleming, writing the James Bond novels, and now has a third international airport and hosts some of Jamaica's most expensive real estate and high-end accommodation. Ocho Rios was once a rural fishing village until the 1960s, when bauxite interests purchased lands and constructed a port to export bauxite, and then the government had a strategic push towards tourism in this area. Ocho Rios has now close to 4,000 rooms with attractions like Duns River Falls, Dolphin Cove, Fern Gully, and Blue Hole. Down the road, Couples at Tower Island was one of the earliest hotel properties to be built in the 50s by Abe Isso. Montego Bay, now known as the Second City, became popular when the airport was built for World War II and saw the construction of Sunset Lodge and Casablanca near the world-famous Doctor's Cave Beach. While Montego Bay's economy is diverse and includes manufacturing, BPOs, and commerce, tourism remains a significant contributor. Negril was once a fishing village until the 1970s, when the road was built and saw the construction of Sundowner, Tea Water, and Negril Beach Club. Today, Negril has over 4,500 rooms and sees visitors enjoying nature-based attractions, such as Rick's Cafe, and going to rural communities, including Mayfield Falls and YS Waterfalls in middle quarters. Although the area of Newcastle and the Blue and John Crow Mountains have remained low density and, rever and remains very much off the beaten track, this has also become increasingly desirable to a niche market of travelers who want a cooler climate are interested in meeting coffee farmers and climbing the Blue Mountains. The Jamaica Tourist Board has slowly but surely been promoting this area for its culinary trail and the Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee Festival. Last but not least, my home base, Treasure Beach, which while remaining largely a fishing and farming community, saw the introduction of tourism back in 1940 with the construction of the Treasure Beach Hotel. Since then, small guest houses and cottages were built to accommodate backpackers, mainly from Germany, who were on a budget holiday and were looking to spend several months, as well as during the months of August and September when Jamaicans would come for the bird shooting season. During the period of 1978 to 1980, 
Desmond Henry from Treasure Beach became the director of tourism and him along with Diana McIntyre Pike pioneered and promoted community-based tourism. Over the years, stakeholders of Treasure Beach have lobbied the Town and Country Planning Authority, the Parish Development Committee, NEPO, and the St. Elizabeth Municipal Corporation to remain the lowest density in Jamaica. Bring it down. To remain the lowest density in Jamaica at 30 rooms per acre and over a relatively short period of time has seen the market shift to building of an airdrome, several luxury villas and a handful of boutique hotels. In 2001, Treasure Beach was fortunate to have been selected as the home of the Calabash International Literary Festival. Over the past 20 years, Calabash has become the largest literary festival in the Caribbean and a fixture on the global literary calendar. Calabash has brought international journalists and acclaimed authors including Shalman Rushdie, Zadie Smith, and Linton Kwesi Johnson, among others, to this rural community. This event, along with the Jake's Off-Road Triathlon, which is now the longest running triathlon in the world, and fishing tournament has brought even more attention to this destination. Having active community-based nonprofits such as Treasure Beach Women's Group and Breads the Treasure Beach Foundation is very helpful in applying for grants and doing fundraisers for projects that support and empower tourism stakeholders in the community. One such project has been Breads working along with TP Deco and fishermen to become compliant boat tour operators. This initiative saw this group becoming tourism stakeholders that could safely and legally offer tours to local attractions, including Black River Safari and the Galleon Beach Fishing Sanctuary. But it is nearby Pelican Bar, which in my mind is one of the greatest examples of a success story for rural development. Having been founded and operated by a former fisherman called Floyd, this bar, which is now rated among the top 15 bars in the world, provides an alternative livelihood to approximately 50 boat tour operators, all of whom were former fishermen. As we all know, travelers are seeking unique touch experiences that they can share with their family and friends. They want to capture these moments in pictures and video and gain bragging rights and likes for doing so. In essence, a lot of tourists want to be seen as travel specialists and influencers who are going off the beaten track in search of an authentic experience. We are fortunate that Jamaica is insta-ready and provides a perfect backdrop for this type of social media experience. These off-road and sometimes off-beat experiences now abound, bringing exposure to parts of our unique culture and heritage and areas of the island previously overlooked. Just take a glance at the varied offerings on Airbnb experiences launched just two years ago, which range from tasting Jamaican chocolate with a local chocolatier, attending a dance hall class, and going to Culture Yard in Trenchtown to see where Bob Marley took his inspiration, to biking in the Blue Mountains, running with a hundred hooligans in Montego Bay, and experience with local dogs, yes, you heard me right, at the Montego Bay Animal Shelter, and learning about a goat dairy at Ruby Goat Farm in Trelawney. Local tour operators such as Island Roots have also seen the value of offering off the beaten track tours with excursions such as their Mini Roots program, a guided tour through local communities, while Trucker Caribbean takes visitors to remote areas on trips like the Zion bus line to Nine Mile. Small boutique concierge companies like newcomers like Dr. Bird Services are also emerging and have found a niche in offering personalized and often high-end services to visitors seeking exclusive experiences. In the same regard, I believe there is tremendous potential for the development of agro-tourism across our country. Forerunners in this area have been small operators such as Stush in the Bush, a high-end vegan farm-to-table experience in Sentan run by Chris and Lisa Bins, Anna K. Tomlinson's Miss Tees at Murphy Hill, cooking classes in the mountains overlooking Ocho Rios, 
Beach cookouts by Captain Joseph Brown and Dennis Abrahams on the secluded Fort Charles Beach in St. Elizabeth. And country-style tours out of Mandeville, which takes guests into the deep heart of communities to see experiences such as Bami making. As we turn our attention to the importance of food security, based on our experience in this pandemic and the fact that Jamaica imports close to 60% of its food, opportunities exist for additional farm tours and agro-processing experiences to become a pillar of our recovery, adding value to both our agriculture and tourism sector. Funding for these type of projects are available with grants or concessionary loans, available by way of JSIF, EXIM, Jamaica National Small Business, and the Development Bank of Jamaica. While data and support for the viability of these initiatives can be accessed via agencies that include TPDCO, PIOJ, PSOJ, and the GHTA. In conclusion, developing rural Jamaica and facilitating access to Jamaica's lesser known gems lift the entire tourism product for, hotel for hoteliers across the island. It is key for stakeholders to understand all the various niche markets, including agritourism, and how important issues such as environmental protection, zoning, carrying capacity, access and density are to expanding our offerings and therefore maintaining the interests of repeat guests while enticing new visitors to our shores. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason Hensel, for taking us back in time, giving us a bit of the, the history in terms of tourism in rural Jamaica. Uh, we all who have studied the history would remember that the, the global trade in bananas started in the parish of Portland uh, by a gentleman by the name of George Bush, B-U-S-C-H. And that was 1868. But Captain Lorenzo Dow Baker really got the industry moving and getting those boats going over to, to Boston, Massachusetts. That's how Boston in Portland got its name. And also uh, Boundbrook got its name from the birthplace of Captain Lorenzo Dow Baker in Massachusetts. So the banana trade, Jamaica started the global trade in bananas. And that global trade gave birth to tourism. And that birthplace of tourism is Portland. So there you go, a bit of the history there. Thank you. Now it's time for us to introduce to you, and again, let's remind you, there are some very special prizes. Keep watching on visitjamaica.com. Uh, monitor Visit Jamaica on Facebook. Visit Jamaica is also on YouTube you just might be one of the lucky winners. It's time for us to introduce to you now uh, Deputy Director of uh, Tourism, Mr. Donnie Dawson. He has responsibility for the Americas. In 1975, he joined the Jamaica Tourist Board at its Kingston headquarters as a sales representative. He was later transferred to the board's Florida office as sales representative in 1977 with responsibility for marketing Jamaica in the southern region of the United States. In 1979, he was appointed to the position of regional sales manager with Jamaica Resort Hotels with responsibility for the western United States, but he couldn't stay away from Jamaica or the Jamaica Tourist Board for that matter. So he rejoined the Jamaica Tourist Board in California in 1982 where he was given the mandate to expand and that was then uh, or what was then a satellite office to a full-service regional operation covering 13 states. In October 2003, Donnie Dawson was appointed Deputy Director of Tourism for the Jamaica Tourist Board with a location in the board's Florida office. Uh, the position includes the administrative as well as sales and promotional marketing of the board's operation throughout the United States and Latin America. If you love a game of golf, 
and you'd like to play around, uh, no doubt Donnie Dawson will be happy to join you. He's an avid golfer. He has been instrumental in organizing several golf events for Jamaica, including the Celebrity Players Tournament, Travel and Leisure Golf Invitational Pro-Am, and the Jamaica Invitational Pro-Am, Annie's Revenge. Please welcome Donnie Dawson. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, Durban. Thank you. Uh, before I start, I want to do a quick shout out to uh, my good friend, uh, congratulating him again on his presidency, um, Clifton. Clifton, congratulations again. Um, it was very interesting to hear Jason uh, uh, talk, and I, I really was, was inspired, Jason, because I've been around a, quite a while as my resume uh, dictated there, and um, I've seen the progression of our, our, our business over the years. So that's good. I've been um, asked this morning to talk about the impact of COVID-19 from the perspective of source markets. Um, interesting topic. So let, 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 let's get started. It is without question that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a significant impact on our business arrival. I mean, that, that, that's just a given. However, not from one or only us or main markets, the US, but from all markets. Uh, let us a quick reminder. Jamaica ended 2019 with an 8.4% stopover increase globally year over year. The US alone had an increase of 12.9% in 2019 year over year in real numbers. 1.8 million stopover arrivals. Latin America ended 2019 close to 39,000 arrivals. Uh, I'm going to spend a little time on my biggest heartbreak, Latin America. We, uh, why I say my, my biggest heartbreak because we have worked hard at developing Latin America as a region that we know that if we mine properly, we can get significant numbers from this region. We worked hard to get Copa Airlines to fly from Panama into Montego and Kingston, which they have done. They started with daily service into Montego Bay and, in King, and into Kingston, connecting a lot of the Latin American cities. In December of last year, 2019, we finally got one of the major airlines, LATAM Airlines, to fly from Lima, Peru, into uh, Jamaica, into Montego Bay. What the LATAM service gave us was a deeper penetration into the Latin America market, meaning that they would go into uh, countries like Argentina from the capital Buenos Aires, but also from other cities like Mendoza and Cordoba in southern uh, Argentina. The service took off. I mean, it really was doing well. Uh, we started in, in, in December of last year, and through March, when the service was suspended, it operated close to 80-85% load factor, which was ex exceptional. So we were getting visitors from Argentina, became our, our, one of our largest markets in, in South, South America. A country that we didn't have our eyes on suddenly emerged, which is Uruguay and also Paraguay, because LATAM gave us this connectivity. Um, so as we move on with Latin America, and uh, the conversation regarding Latin America ties nicely into this year's theme with the UN WTO, Tourism and Rural Development. And I also want to add community tourism. Latin Americans enjoy getting out and actively seek 
off the beaten track cultural experiences that they really associate themselves closely with Jamaica. They like to get out and explore. You know, um, Jason probably was smiling over there because a lot of Latin Americans get out and go down to the South Coast, in particular in that, in that region. Brazilians in particular love our food and our culture. They identify with it a lot. So we're going to miss a lot of this in the short term because of course Latin America like everywhere else will come back, will definitely come back. But it was a little bit interesting to me can you, it's interesting to me uh, on the theme uh, of rural development because, you know, I talked to some um, uh, grown operators, door operators in, in Jamaica, and one in particular said to me, Donnie, you know, when that Latin plane lands in Montego Bay, it's like everybody scatters. We don't know where to go. They're, they're gone. And yes, I've heard that, you know, they're, they're gone rural, they're, they're gone to explore. And I like to stay in in not Airbnb, but b, &B local um, bread and breakfast um, accommodations, that they seek out these accommodations. <clears throat> so um, I, I'm confident that, that they will come back and, and they will, they're the ones that will influence this whole rural and uh, development and community um, tourism. Sorry, let's, let's press on. U.S. Air Service, as soon as our borders were reopened, all the major U.S. carriers resumed service to Jamaica, albeit, of course, at a reduced capacity. But that was a very, very strong signal of Jamaica's resiliency, that all the major U.S. carriers chose Jamaica to come back to almost immediately. The Deltas, the Americans, the, the Southwest, the, the jet blues of this world came back. And believe it, not a lot of other destinations within the Caribbean got the amount of immediate air service as Jamaica did. So based on this, I am confident, confident that in short order, Jamaica will rebound as soon as we go through this phase of, of, of COVID-19. All your carriers will increase service from all major gateways this winter making Jamaica that even much more aggress uh, accessible. We are, uh, of course, reaching out to them. And <clears throat> I expect I expect that at the end of the day, we should have about half a million seats coming out of the US, a little, uh, reduction, but quite a significant amount of seats coming out this winter that will give us the occupancy that Clifton talked about. <clears throat> Through this COVID time, one of our, the strongest partners that we have is the retail travel agents. And we have established within Canada, the rest of the world, a database of over 40,000 Jamaica travel specialists uh, that are selling Jamaica. So we have been, continued to engage them. We'll continue to engage them. And I'm sure that uh, they will be supporting us uh, for the winter and indications are we look good. Our second largest source market, of course, is Canada. And I'm very high on Canada because I feel with the commitments that we have received from the tour operators and airlines in Canada, that this winter will be a fairly good winter from Canada. And we're gonna have good air service from our major gateways, Toronto, Montreal, and out of Calgary. Also been reliably informed that um, we're going to get air service from about 14 other gateways out of um, Canada. <clears throat> so I am very high on Canada this winter. I think we'll see good Canadian business. Uh, and um, so it, it looks good. The, 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 the outlook looks very, very good. So, but the impact in the short term, ladies and gentlemen, has been, of course, tremendous. I say remain confident um, that the Jamaica Tourist Board is working overtime to ensure that Brand Jamaica stays top of mind. Uh, all the folks in the marketplace are doing an excellent job. 
uh, keeping the brand alive and we will keep it going and, and, and do a speedy, speedy recovery. Thank you. Thank you very much, Donnie Dawson, JTB's Deputy Director for the Americas, looking at the impact of COVID-19 from the perspective of our source markets. Once again, we remind you there are lots of prizes to be had. Keep watching on visitjamaica.com. Stay tuned to YouTube and check out Facebook. You just might emerge a lucky winner. Right now, ours is the pleasure and a privilege to introduce a dynamic, results-oriented leader recognized for his wide-ranging expertise and accomplishments in both tourism and politics. He was first appointed Minister of Tourism in 2007, serving until December 2011. While serving in the Shadow Cabinet following his first stint as Tourism Minister, he traveled the world forging alliances with strategic partners for global initiatives. He returned to the helm of the Ministry of Tourism in 2016. Under his leadership, tourism has been positioned as a catalyst for sustainable and inclusive growth through job creation, public-private partnerships, wealth creation, and community transformation. He has become a powerful voice and tireless advocate for global tourism resilience. He's founder and co-chair of the Global Tourism Resilience and Crisis Management Center, GTRCMC, at the University of the West Indies, Mona, which is dedicated to conducting policy-relevant research and analysis on destination preparedness, management, and recovery due to disruptions and crises that impact tourism. As one of the world's leading tourism ministers, he has represented Jamaica regionally and internationally. He has served as a chairman of the board of affiliate members of the United Nations World Tourism Organization, UNWTO, vice chairman of the UNWTO Executive Council, and vice chair of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, CTO. He's currently the chair of the UNWTO Regional Commission of the Americas and vice chair of the Organization of American States Inter-American Committee on Tourism. He has copped numerous awards for his years of dedicated service to tourism, including Caribbean Tourism Minister of the Year at the Caribbean Travel Awards in 2017, Pacific Area Travel Writers Association Patwa Tourism Minister of the Year for Sustainable Tourism for 2018, 2019 Travi Awards Chairman's Award for Global Tourism Innovation and the RGR Glena uh, Hospitality Jamaica 2019 Pioneer Award. And just when perhaps he thought it wouldn't get better, uh, although he's an optimist anyway, it got better because just recently on World Tourism Day this year, on Sunday, he was welcomed into the International Tourism Hall of Heroes by the Rebuilding Travel Group for his wide-ranging expertise and accomplishments in tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls everywhere, please welcome the Minister of Tourism for Jamaica, the Honorable Edmund Bartlett. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Derval, Dervan Graham, and I, you know, um, Derval, Dervan, it's been like that. I have too many Derv something around me. I, my, my chauffeur is Derval. My ever effervescent uh, commentator and uh, talk show host and radio personality is a der van, <laughs> and so and so he's the moving one. But both of them do move. One move me. 
Well, thank you so much, Devon. You have been a real inspiration and a leader in so many ways. Our distinguished partners all across the virtual space, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, as we bring down the curtain on Tourism Awareness Week 2020, I'm really pleased that the final event is a webinar that has brought together this distinguished panel to share insights on the theme, tourism, and rural development. If we truly want tourism to be the heartbeat of Jamaica's economy, then we must exploit the considerable potential of our rural communities. Building out a community tourism framework is a critical act to the sustainability and growth of the sector and indispensable to the diversification of our tourism product. More importantly, it will spur rural development and by so doing contribute to the economic empowerment of rural citizens. Tourism is one of the world's largest industrial sectors, driving job creation, economic growth, and infrastructural development. In the last seven months, however, the COVID-19 pandemic and its containment measures have severely tested the resilience of the global tourism economy. Pre-pandemic, there were some 1.5 billion international tourist arrivals. Travel and tourism then accounted for some 10.3% of global GDP, and it employed one in 10 of all the persons around the world. At home here in Jamaica, we welcome some 4.3 million visitors, and the sector earned in the process 3.7 billion US dollars contributing 9.5% of the nation's GDP and generated some 170,000 jobs directly. As a matter of fact, in the year 2019, it generated nearly 40,000 new jobs in a single year. Unfortunately, both at home and abroad, COVID-19 has resulted in major job losses, while the fallout in business and earnings have been astounding. Probably the single positive takeaway from this COVID crisis, however, is that it has highlighted tourism's critical importance to national development. Tourism is indeed the heartbeat of our economy, and it will serve as the catalyst of Jamaica's post-COVID economic recovery. I make that point against the background that tourism has a record globally over the last 100 years as being the industry with the fastest bounce back capability to regenerate and re-energize economies. And we've seen it in the last 50 years in particular after SARS and the world economy literally stood still for a period. Tourism came with a bang, 8% growth afterwards. Then we had the issues with H1N1 and chikungunya and a number of other. And in between all of that, we also had issues with terrorism. Then came 9-11. And with 9-11, we saw literally a cessation of economic activities across the globe. Tourism and travel came back with growth over 5% during the period. And then a fourth disruption came in the form of the global economic meltdown of 2089. And at that period, the entire global economic architecture did a flip. Uh, many were capsizing, right-sizing, downsizing, and, and generally falling off the cliff. But tourism bounced back and grew uh, exponentially between uh, 2010 to 2019, 20, and grew at the fastest rate of all economies and enabled growth at the levels I indicated earlier on and GDP contribution of the 10% we spoke. So what we find is that tourism, therefore, is that catalyst which enables quick recovery after global shocks. And this pandemic, in all its negative impact, 
does not and will not prevent tourism from bouncing back and doing so quickly. And part of the reason tourism bounced back so fast is its capacity for immediate convertibility of the resource. So that as the plane lands, it brings the wealth and it immediately is converted and brought into the pockets and the hands of the ordinary people. As the cruise ship land um, docks at the port, a similar way, and the dollar comes straight into the pockets of the small and medium uh, enterprises. In particular, as we look in Ocho Rios and we see what happens with our, um, our craft vendors who immediately benefit, our um, drivers and our um, transportation uh, subsector that benefits immediately, our uh, attractions that benefit immediately, and then of course the shopping arrangements, uh, duty free and so on, benefits immediately. What we're saying therefore is that tourism represents the fastest way to transfer wealth from the rich to the poor. But as we reimagine then tourism product in these uncertain times, the focus on rural development seemed quite timely. Tourism in rural areas will provide key opportunities to, for recovery as these communities seek to bounce back from the harsh economic setback caused by the pandemic. And I wanted to make this point because globally, 80% of tourism is driven by rural folks, small, medium, and micro enterprises. The essence of the experiences of visitors across the globe is found in rural areas. The glories of the geophysical features that define the world and makes unique certain places that attracts people to study and to find out more about the wonders of nature are all by and large in rural communities. But tourism also has that capacity to transform rural communities from sleeping dead little areas into bustling centers of economic activity. We saw that here in Jamaica. Ocho Rios was a sleepy little fishing village 60 years ago. Today it is a buzzing center of commerce, creating jobs and providing economic well-being for thousands, and is a center of economic activity. Montego Bay, 80 years ago, 50, 60 years ago, was in a similar position. Today, Montego Bay is the largest tourism center in the Caribbean, driving billions of dollars and creating jobs and well-being for hundreds of thousands of people. Negril was a sleepy little swamp area infested by mosquitoes and so on. Today, Negril is the most critical center for uh, what we call casual tourism in the Caribbean. The development is astounding. Then we go to your community, Jason, in Treasure Beach. And wow, look at the transformation that's happening there. We want this transformation then to happen all across Jamaica in our rural areas. So we are now redefining the destinations to enable that transformation. So St. Thomas is the next uh, frontier for us. And the rest of the South Coast are also on the radar in terms of that. And we are partnering with the Tourism Enhancement Fund to create enablement through economic uh, programs and through credit arrangements with our partners like Exim Bank. So the Exim Bank was given a billion dollars to on land, to small and medium enterprises, a lot of rural folk. Two days ago, we signed and, and kicked off a Ready2, a second phase of a program with the World Bank where 40 million US dollars are going to be made available again for rural development and for work with our farmers and our local entrepreneurs to provide better tourism experiences for our visitors. And then, we look at how we develop our, our mountain areas and, and mountain tourism. And then we look at some of our great um, commodities like coffee and how we can integrate the coffee experience with the tourism experience, providing jobs 
and enabling development in those rural communities. But technology, we have found, is a friend and a partner. And technology works well with rural folks as it does with urban folks. And the good news is that we have been applying technology to create connectivity between the markets and the suppliers. And so with Alex, we establish a new platform called Alex, which is the AgroLinkages Network, that would connect the small farmers in rural Jamaica with the hotels on the North Coast and elsewhere, and also with the supermarkets in the urban centers. So even as COVID came, and the activities between the hotels and the small farmers uh, subsided somewhat, we were able to continue the activity with the supermarkets, and more importantly, to be able to move the products straight to the homes of consumers because the technology was good. So we're going to use more of that technology. So while we do that, we're also creating marketing opportunities for rural folks to be able to benefit and lock into the value chain of tourism. So the artisan villages is a new concept to enable our farmers and also our providers of uh, services primarily entertainment services, but cultural products to generate creative outputs so our artisans will be able to stay on location, receive a design from a visitor who comes to the shores in the morning, say from a cruise, leaves that design with the artisan, has the product executed and on his return to the ship collects the finished product and pays the artisan his price. And this is a new development and this is a very important innovation that we are moving to give to our artisans and our producers an opportunity to have comparative advantage in the market. So now they're not competing. With, with, with price as a result of, because they are producing unique pieces that are autochthonous, that are from their own inner person, and it is the reflection of their own imagination uh, and their own sense of what the realities around them are, while they are also able to produce on the realities of others through designs which come to them. So this, for us, is a new dimension to enabling our local small entrepreneurs and our community folks to be able to tap better into the value chain of tourism. And finally, we want to establish a training module that enables certification of our partners in the industry. Because it is not enough for us to be just providers of the output. It is also key for us to be thought leaders. And Jamaica has been leading in this area. And so we will find that out of our rural communities can come webinars like this, that our local folks can be explaining the methodologies used to produce the goods and services that they provide for the visitors. The technology that they apply even in their farming practices. And indeed, they can also be able to tell stories about the development of their own areas. And griots from those areas who are great storytellers can carry the history and the tradition and represent the retentions, the historic and other retentions of those communities. I'm excited, therefore, by the prospects of what we can do and will achieve with COVID and post-COVID as a result of the collaboration between rural communities and tourism. I'm excited about the prospects because we have the mission clearly cut out in our mind. But more importantly, we have the vision and we have the articulation of that vision. And finally, we have the human resources to make that vision a reality. I want to thank all the teams who have worked so hard during this week to highlight tourism and its critical role as a transforming agent in our rural communities. And I want to indicate the commitment of the government of Jamaica under the most honorable Andrew Holness and the cabinet to drive this process and to enable a better understanding 
of how each of us can contribute more to our own enhancement and development through the prism of tourism. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Bartlett. And we join you in thanking the respective teams. Uh, of course, the Jamaica Tourist Board, the JTB, uh, the Tourism Enhancement Fund, TPD Co, agencies of the Ministry of Tourism, other partners on board, J JAMVAC, Jamaica Vacations, that is, uh, Devon House, Milk River, Mineral Spa, Bath Fountain Hotel and Spa, uh, the Montego Bay Convention Center. And we thank them for partnering with us on this Tourism Awareness Week webinar, looking at tourism and rural development. We believe uh, Media Liaison Officer Lucretia Green, as well as Okay, all right. Well, they're playing their role behind the scenes and we don't want to start calling everybody's name, but thanks to everybody for playing their part in that regard. We would certainly like to encourage you to keep following visitjamaica.com, log on to visitjamaica.com, uh, keep uh, following the Jamaica Tourist Board on Facebook, and uh, YouTube as well, because uh, the team is ensuring that uh, if you uh, have been paying attention, you will get an opportunity to win a prize or two. So we'd like to say a big thank you to uh, the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Edmund Bartlett, for his work, uh, which has been recognized globally, as we've indicated, the most recent being his induction in the Hall of Fame, International uh, Hall of Fame Heroes, as far as tourism is concerned. All he needs now is that one of those uh, superhero suits. Uh, what's it, uh, the, the E? <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Minister. Well done. Would like to thank uh, our uh, presenters, uh, with, we thank Angela Bennett, Regional Director uh, for the JTB in Canada, Clifton Reader, uh, President of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, uh, Donovan White, Director of Tourism, Jason Hensel, uh, Chairman of Jake's Hotel Villas and Spa, uh, Donnie Dawson, Deputy Director of Tourism for the uh, Jamaica Tourist Board in the Americas. Again, we want to thank the entire team working behind the scenes. As we said, we could get into trouble trying to call names, but you know yourselves. Thank you very much. Uh, team Jamaica Tourist Board, Team Tourism Enhancement Fund, Team TPD Co, and uh, the, the ministry under which those agencies fall, uh, Team Ministry of Tourism, and the partners, Jamvac, Devon House, Milk River, uh, Hotel and Mineral Spa, Bath Fountain Hotel and Spa, and uh, the Montego Bay Convention Center. And most importantly, thanks to you, our faithful viewers and uh, listeners all over the globe, uh, for making it this uh, Tourism Awareness Week webinar. We once again want to continue to share information with you all over the globe. We look forward to welcoming you uh, to Jamaica land we love. Bless you, be safe, take care.